In this lesson, we're going to discuss the entity selection process. So if I select a tool or something, let's say this line tool, and I snap it to the grids, I can't select any entities right now because I have a tool active. What I have to do is go up here and clear all the tools, which puts us in the idle state. If you remember the term, the idle state, reset or idle state. Now the selection tool works like it does in most other Windows programs. If I left click on something, it becomes selected. If I left click on something else, it, it deselects everything else and only selects the thing you left click. So it's very specific, it only selects one thing at a time. We can also use the shift key, hold down the shift key and add things to the selection. So we can add these two things. We can also hold down the shift key and click on a selection and remove it from the selected group. This is quite similar to most Windows functions also. So I'm going to remove this one and then I'm going to click. If you notice, if I just click on something that doesn't deselect it. I do a shift key by itself, it does deselect it. If I'm going to select it again, you can also just click away from it and it deselects it. So that's how you make single selections using QCAD. While we're in the idle mode with no tools selected, we can use a box method to select items. So if we draw our boxes from the left to right side of the screen, notice down there it says select entity or region. So I'm going to left click here, drag across, and when I go left to right, only any entities that are fully contained within the window, the box, will be selected. So just a circle will be selected when I let go. And notice that's what happened. Just like in the single selection process, we can hold the shift key draw another box from left to right and add any other entities that are fully contained inside that box which will be this single line by itself. And I'll let go. The other point we want to discuss here is that if we draw the box from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen then it will select not only all entities contained within the box but any entity that touches inside the box also. So in this case we're going to select the two lines plus the circle. So once again I can click away and deselect everything. We can use the shift key to add everything contained within this, a box. So let's go ahead and do a right to left box again on the circle, the small circle. That's selected those three lines. Now let's do a right to left box on this line down here, but it could also include the big circle. You gotta hold the shift key. Hold the shift key, click and drag. Only the lines inside the box, but the circle touches the box. So the circle and the line are both selected. So that is how we use the box selections while you're in the idle state with no tools selected. Once again, clicking off the area deselects everything. Clicking off of any entity deselects everything. So that's how you use boxes in the idle mode to select objects. Now we're going to in use the um, selection toolbar to do some selection training here. The most obvious one here on the left is deselect all and it does that. And the right one is select all, so it selects everything. It sucks even beyond the viewing area. Anything on any layer, layer, if you have multiple layers, anything on any layer that is visible, any visible layer, will be selected whether it's within the viewing area of this little window or not. So keep that in mind. And you could have some surprises there. If you don't keep track of that. So we're going to deselect everything. Of course, you don't want you to select everything. Just click in a blank drawing area. It deselects everything too. By selecting this choice here, select view. Notice at the bottom it tells you down in the in the status area that select all entities that are completely inside the current visible area. So any partial entities will not be selected. Anything that's not on the viewing area of the screen here currently will not be selected. But it will be selected on all layers that are visible that are within the viewing area. So now we select everything in the viewing area on all layers. We can also use this tool right here, invert the current selections. Right now, nothing's selected in the viewing area. This will, in fact, select everything in the viewing area by inverting what's selected, which was nothing, to everything. And we can invert it again from everything to nothing by using this tool here. 
which is called invert the current selection. Next we're going to look at these two toolbars right here. Select all entities inside a rectangle and select, deselect all entities inside a polygon. The only difference between these two tools right here, one that simply draws a rectangle, one draws a multifaceted, multi-shaped polygon. So we're going to select the rectangle tool. As soon as we do that, we're going to freehand too, by the way. And notice up here that we have a mode four mode choices, which we discussed earlier. So in this particular mode, it's going to replace the current selection. Well, right now, there is no current selection. Therefore, when we draw our box, remember in, in this particular mode, with these two tools, with that tool right there, you can't drag the box. You have to do the first corner with a click. Then you have to do the second corner with a click, like it says down here. And that will select what's within the box. And, and it deselected anything that, that was already selected, which there wasn't anything already selected. So that's sort of a moot point. Okay, now we can see it actually work. We have something selected. We're still in the same mode. We're going to deselect anything else and reselect this line. We're going to try to select just this line by itself. We still have our tool present, selection tool. It says first corner, so we select the first corner. Come down here. Now click on the second corner. And notice it removed the circle. It deselected the previously selected items. And now it reselected a new thing within the rectangle. So that's how that tool functions in this particular mode. Now the next mode says add to the current selection. So once again, we're still using this tool. We're going to use a rectangle to define the next entity that we're going to add. It's asking for the first corner down here. So we're going to come up here, left click first corner, left click second corner. Now we've added that tool. Okay, the next mode has to do with removing things that are within the box. Notice the, the big box is the original selection items, and the small box is the new rectangle we're going to draw. So we can remove any part of the things that are already selected. So in this example, let's we'll go up here in first corner of this box. We'll come down here, second corner. Now it removed this line from the selection, which was both of these items. It just removed it. In this mode, we're going to intersect with the current selection. In other words, things that are already selected within that group of selected things, anything that our new rectangle includes will be retained. Anything that's not within a new rectangle will be removed. So we go up here and we'll make our new rectangle so that it, re it keeps these two things, but this thing will be removed. So we draw our new rectangle. Once again, it's asked for the first corner. Go up here and click on the first corner. Bring a rectangle down to here. That's got those two selected items included. And notice now the third item is no longer selected. These modes are very handy if you have a very complicated drawing. You're trying to you're trying to weed out things you want to select or deselect. And these modes help you do that. In this particular case, we're using a rectangle. If we go back, we can use polygon to do the same thing. Let's just demonstrate a polygon for a second. Let's say we want to go up here and we want to add to the current selection. We could take, now it says first point. So we are say we had some weird things. We had to get all these different shapes to get everything included. And now we've got everything included. This particular line, that's not important. I just want to show you what a polygon looks like. So we define the next point. Now we right click when we're finished and there it is. It selected everything contained within that polygon. So that's how you use these two tools. These two tools right here. They're very handy. They have very unique features and they also use this mode selection process up here. One thing we haven't talked about yet is the cross selection. So we're currently in this mode right here. We're going to add to the current selection. We're going to enable the cross selection function. And now when we draw our 
rectangle. I'm on the polygon mode. Let's go back to the rectangle mode. Okay, now we're, we're going to add to the selection, the cross selection. Anything that crosses the rectangle now will be included. So let's have the circle and this line. The circle and this line will be added because they both will cross what I'm going to, about to draw. So here's my drawing. First corner, second corner. Notice now the circle and the line are added. So once again, we'd be very selective about what we include in our selections using these tools. Next, we're going to talk about this, this tool right here, Select Connected Entities. It also says Select Contour, TC. What that means is that if we just have a normal idle condition, if I select this line right here, it didn't select that line right there, but the two are actually attached right here. They're connected, but they're separate entities that are connected. So what a contour does for us is that when we have we're going to select them here. When we have entities that are attached, clicking on the, one of the entities will select both entities. Another example would be a simple box made of four lines. A box would also be a contour. So this allows us to select things that are connected together. We can also use the the uh, rectangle function. We'll go down here and we'll, we'll add another. Right now we're going to add another contour. It's within this entity here. And notice that now I added this contour which consists of these two lines which are connected. So now we have two contours that are both selected. We can also remove a contour from the group of contours. So choose the entity of the contour. So we're going to remove both of those from the contour grouping. So the contour function works in that way. And it can be useful if you want to remove things that have some physical connectivity. So let's go up here and deselect everything. And we'll go into the, the next tool. Next, we're going to use this tool right here, which says select all entities intersected by a line. At first glance, you might think it means to select some line on the drawing and everything that is intersected by that line will be selected, but that's not the case at all. What we're going to do is establish our own line. So when I click this function, we'll be adding things now and deselecting other things, new selections. If I draw my own line, first point of my own line starts here, and the first my own line ends there, notice these these three objects, a circle and these two lines, were all intersected by my line. I can go ahead and I can subtract things that are intersected by my line. Once again, now this mouse down here doesn't really give me a current status. It's sort of hung up for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. It might be a bug in the program. At any rate, I just had a new intersecting line which got rid of the one of the selections. I'll have a third intersecting line which starts here and goes down to here and got rid of that selection. So the status isn't working definitely. So I'll add some more things by a new intersecting line. I'll add these guys here. Okay, so now I can remove things that aren't intersected by the line. Notice it moved everything else except what was intersected by the line. So the same mode functionality works with this tool as with all the other tools. Only this one, you use your own line, you can draw your own freehand line to decide what's intersected and what is added or deleted from the selection process. Next, we're going to talk about this tool right here. It's select all entities on the same layer. So I'm going to select that tool. And once again, we have the mode functions up here. But there's some issues here we have to point out. This is version 3.4.6, and it has some issues. For example, this mode version is redundant to this one. There's no difference between the two. And this mode version doesn't do anything. And this mode version deselects everything. This mode version adds everything. So let's let's prove that. 
right here we have layer one is the white drawing entities and the second layer are the it's a line on the second layer it's a yellow entity so the concept here is that if we select things with this entities on the same layer if I click on and it says down to choose an entity on the layer so I choose an entity on the white drawing layer then it will select everything on the white drawing layer and it will not select the yellow line and that's how it's supposed to work. If we come over here and we select this mode of operation which is going to subtract from the current selection we click on any entity in the white layer region and it will deselect all the white layer entities. That's how the program is supposed to work. What's confusing is that this does the same thing as the, as the first mode. That mode box probably shouldn't be viewable because if I click on any entity it does the same thing as this box over here did. But if I use this one, I try to deselect, it won't deselect. I use this one to deselect. If I use this one to try to select, it won't select either. So it's really non-functional in this particular select layer mode. So that will quite possibly be, be fixed in future revisions of the software. So this concludes our discussion of selection process. It's a complicated process, but it's also very powerful. And your thorough understanding is very important when you get into detailed drawings with lots of different items that you want to select and deselect.